Well, it's a good story, but it makes for a terrible history lesson. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 least historically accurate biopics. For this list, we're looking at biopics that took enormous creative liberties with their historical subjects. The discrepancies can come in the form of character changes and major dramatic deviations from the real story. And obviously, a spoiler alert is now in effect. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, The Irishman. You know, I don't, uh, I don't care whether you did it or not. That makes no difference to me. Yeah, I don't. I'm here to defend you. The Irishman is based on Charles Brandt's nonfiction book, I Heard You Paint Houses, which chronicles the life of Frank Sheeran and his alleged connection to the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa. It seemingly and finally solves the mystery of Hoffa's fate. Or does it? Unfortunately, there's no way to corroborate this story. We didn't know what the hell was going on. In fact, numerous experts have come forward to debunk the claims made in the book, including a Harvard Law School professor named Jack Goldsmith and the case's lead FBI investigator, Andrew Sluss. There is still no proof that Sharon killed anyone, let alone Jimmy Hoffa. It certainly makes for a good legend, but a legend it may remain. Everybody's dead, Mr. Sheeran. It's over. They're all gone. Number nine, Alexander. I didn't cross Asia to steal this victory, Cassandra. No. You are too honorable for that. Seriously, why are there no good movies about Alexander the Great? Director Oliver Stone has admitted he ignored history for the purposes of dramatic storytelling. And as you can imagine, this has seriously ticked off some historians. There's just so much wrong with this movie that we don't even know where to start. The depictions of the Persians is a big one, as they're portrayed as disorganized, turbaned, and speaking Arabic, when in reality, none of that was true. So that's problematic. Some characters are also much younger than they were in real life, key battles are mixed up or ignored entirely, and the movie largely ignored the admirable relationship between Alexander and Porus. To this day, there is no accounting of how many died. It was the worst blunder of his life. Number eight, The Greatest Showman. The story about one of history's biggest shysters and con men was made into a feel-good and empowering musical. We never thought we'd see the day. Charles, right? Age 22? The movie ignores the fact that Tom Thumb was just five years old when he started touring under Barnum and not 22, and Jenny Lind quit because she was sick of Barnum's relentless greed, not because he rejected her advances. So that's it. What do you mean? And let's not forget that the movie completely ignores the fact that Barnum exploited a blind and paralyzed slave for his own profit and amusement. Maybe the movie's a piece of metafiction and aimed to con us like Barnum conned his audiences. We think we cracked it, people. You brought joy into my life. Into all our lives. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Number seven, Bohemian Rhapsody. Our lead singer just quit. Well, then you'll need someone new. Is this the real life? Well, a lot is actually just fantasy. This Freddie Mercury biopic contained a ton of historical inaccuracies that favored sentimentality over realism. Mercury was not the first Queen member to release a solo project, so that whole subplot was nonsense. Are you asking me to break up the band? There is also the fact that Live Aid was not a reunion concert, and the filmmakers only made it so for dramatic and inspiring purposes. And that's not to mention all the inaccuracies within Mercury's life itself. These include falsifying his family background, displaying a problematic representation of Paul Printer, and changing the timeline of Mercury's HIV diagnosis. Hey hey Number six, The King's Speech. For oh, Mrs. Oh, Majesty. Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great title for a movie, as it tells you all you need to know about the story. It's just too bad that the key problem at the center of this story, that is, the king overcoming a stammer to make an impassioned speech, is largely fictional. Yes, King George VI did have a slight stammer, and yes, he did seek the counsel of speech therapist Lionel Logue to fix it. <laughs> However, King George and Logue began working together in 1926, 
And by 1927, aka 12 years before the declaration of war, King George was giving clear and resonant speeches. Not only that, but the characterization of Logue was largely fabricated, as he never swore or called King George Bertie. Bertie, I heard you at Wembley. I was there. My son Laurie said, Dad, do you think you could help that poor man? What, as, as a failed actor? It's true. I'm not a doctor. Number five, the social network. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that that won't be true. It'll be because you're an asshole. Facebook is arguably one of the most important inventions of the modern era, and the story of its inception deserves to be told. However, acclaimed screenwriter Aaron Sorkin admitted that he took some major creative liberties in relaying the story. The internet's not written in pencil mark, it's written in ink. And you published that Erica Albright was a bitch right before you made some ignorant crack about my family's name, my bra size, and then rated women based on their hotness. Most of the criticisms aimed at the movie concern the cold and selfish characterization of Zuckerberg himself. By all accounts, Zuckerberg was a very nice and welcoming man, and he certainly didn't start Facebook in a fit of vengeful rage following a breakup. Zuckerberg, co-founders Dustin Moskovitz and Eduardo Saverin, and Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg all objected to the movie's distorted facts, and said that it had little basis in the boring reality. You know, you really don't need a forensics team to get to the bottom of this. If you guys were the inventors of Facebook, you'd have invented Facebook. Number four, a beautiful mind. That could be a mathematical explanation for how bad your tie is. Mathematician John Nash was a brilliant man with a brilliant story, and Russell Crowe brought said story to life with mesmerizing aplomb. It's just not entirely accurate. The screenplay was viciously roasted by critics and historians, many of whom noted the omission of Nash's inappropriate sexual escapades, numerous affairs, raging classism, anti-Semitism, and neglectful abuse of his first wife and son. In short, it significantly toned down and streamlined a far more complex individual for misleading feel-good purposes. I was so scared you weren't real. It's much like The Greatest Showman in that regard. The movie also completely ignores Reinhard Zelton and Jean Harshani, two co-recipients who shared the Nobel Prize with Nash. My quest has taken me through the physical, the metaphysical, the delusional, and back. Number three, Braveheart. William Wallace. Gotta be no tall enough. Braveheart is a classic, but let's be honest, it's a total mess when it comes to historical accuracy. Screenwriter Randall Wallace claims he took inspiration from an epic 15th century poem, which many experts claim has little basis in reality. Sons of Scotland, I am William Wallace. William Wallace is seven feet tall. Yes, I've heard. There's the bungling of the timeline, as Scotland was invaded by England only one year prior to the rebellion. Isabella was also three years old and in an entirely different country during the Battle of Falkirk. I am the Princess of Wales. I come as the King's servant and with his authority. There's also the problematic representation of William Wallace himself. He did not wear a kilt, as kilts did not exist at the time. He was not a mere commoner. He hung those who refused conscription. And oh yeah, he was not Braveheart. That moniker actually belonged to Robert the Bruce. Number two, Amadeus. Ah, Mozart. Amadeus is a superb and suitably epic biopic concerning the legendary Amadeus Mozart. But like Braveheart, its fabled status doesn't excuse its gross inaccuracies. We can talk all day about Mozart being right-handed, conducting in a modern style, and not enjoying the works of Handel. I know your work well, signore. Do you know why I actually compose some variations on a melody of yours. But the biggest offender is the central conflict between Mozart and Antonio Salieri. Despite a brief rivalry, the composers were actually good friends. They saw each other as colleagues, respected each other's work, and even composed a solo cantata together. The idea that Salieri hated Mozart and planned his death was nothing but a rumor that later entered the public consciousness thanks to a play published in 1830 called Mozart and Salieri. The rest is history fake history. I don't think you should become known in Vienna as a debtor, Mozart. Did any of these surprise you by how inaccurate they actually are? I mean, you'd think a movie like The Social Network would be relatively accurate since it's recent history and the people are still around to fact check, right? Ah oh well, Hollywood works its magic to make real life interesting, I guess. So which biopic is least historically accurate? Let's take a look at some honorable or dishonorable mentions, and then we shall see. It's a pretty bad one, honestly. I can't seem to face up to the facts. I'm tense and nervous. 
I've loved you for so long. All right now. Oh, honey. <laughs> hey, come on now, little smile. Where are you going? I don't know. Well, are you spending Thanksgiving with your family? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Conqueror There are moments for wisdom, Jamoga, then I listen to you. The Conqueror is widely regarded as one of the worst films of all time. It stars John Wayne as Genghis Khan, the controversial founder of the malicious and devastating Mongol Empire. And yes, that is THE John Wayne. The egregious yellow face alone is enough to warrant the top spot on this list. One of my brothers, Jamuga and Kassar. One holds them captive. However, the movie is also filled with other inaccuracies, including issues with the people, tribes, places, and costumes. Perhaps the biggest deviation, you know, aside from the yellow face, is that Genghis Khan kidnaps Bortai and forces her to love him, when in actuality, Bortai was betrothed to Khan in an arranged marriage. I have taken you for wife, Bortai and I take your dowry." They set out to make an epic, and they did. An epic failure. Those who oppose me shall be destroyed. Those who submit shall be spared. And those who freely unite with me shall profit richly. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. I'll show up.